this video will look at the characters of a CPU um, and in particular how they affect performance. So there's a number of common characteristics of a CPU um, and you need to understand what those characteristics are and how they will um, affect the performance of a computer. So the first characteristic is the clock speed. This is how quickly the CPU will carry out the fetch to code um, execute cycle. Um, and what determines the speed is the CPU's clock chip. Now basically inside the CPU there's a tiny little vibrating crystal, An electrical current goes through the crystal, um, it vibrates and maintains a constant rate. Uh, and the speed of the clock of the CPU is measured in Hertz um, and ultimately all that means is how many fetch to code execute cycles it performs in a second. So if it's a 500 Hertz CPU, that means it can do 500 cycles per second, so 500 instructions can be fetched, decoded and executed. Um, and current modern day CPUs are around 3 gigahertz, that means 3 billion cycles per second. 3 billion instructions can be processed every second, which is quite phenomenal. Now there is a way to increase the clock speed of a CPU, but every clock, every CPU that has been developed will be set at a certain clock speed simply um, due to that, you know, basically that's what it's been designed um, to run at, that's the speed it's been designed to run at. But there is a way of overclocking, making a CPU go a little bit faster than it probably was designed to. And that is absolutely fine, so long as you can keep the CPU cold. Because if it's going to be doing a lot more fetch to code execute cycles than it's designed to, it's going to get very, very hot. And the problem is that it will overheat very, very quickly because it's not been designed to do it that fast. So if you can actually reduce the speed, uh, sorry, reduce the temperature of the CPU, then you can increase the speed a little bit. So the cache is another characteristic of the CPU, uh, which will affect its performance. Now, as we um, learned before, the cache is a little bit of um, very fast memory that is uh, very close to the CPU. Now, the RAM that supplies the CPU with um, instructions um, does it fairly quickly, but it can't do it as quickly as a CPU um, works. So what happens is instead um, a little bit of uh, well, fair few instructions are taken from the RAM and put into the cache so that it's there, ready to be sent to the CPU at speed, at the same speed that the CPU um, needs it. So it just allows the CPU to continue to work through those instructions without having to wait for another uh, delivery from the RAM. Um, as it says here, the, the cache memory has read speeds similar to the CPU. It's therefore much faster than the RAM, so it can keep up to up, up with the speed of the CPU. Um, so the CPU's control unit will first look in the cache for any instructions, because inside the cache, often the regularly used instructions, ones that are maybe anticipated to be used next, will be stored. So the CPU will always look in the cache first of all, and hopefully it will immediately get the instructions that it needs um, to keep the um, CPU running fast and the computer um, running at a good speed. If the cache is larger it's more likely that it's got those instructions that are required um, therefore you don't have to rely on having another delivery from the RAM so therefore the CPU uh, can um, continue to work extra quick um, so larger cache generally means faster performance for the CPU. So if the required data is not in the cache, the control unit will request it from the RAM. Data instructions and future instructions are copied to the cache for quick access. So hopefully from then on it can maintain a quick rate. Uh, another characteristic is the number of cores that a CPU has. So um, a core is basically a processing unit. So CPUs um, can actually have more than one core. They could be dual core, they could be quad core and have four, they could have eight cores. Um, and what, these, um, what this means is that a CPU can actually fetch, decode and execute two or four or eight instructions all at the same time. So more data can be processed in the same time period. Now, the two ways in which a CPU with more than one core can process more instructions in the same time period is via parallel processing. So this is when the same program can have two instructions processed at the same time. 
or more cores might allow for multitasking. So each core can each process two different program instructions at the same time. So parallel processing is one program having um, more than one of those of their instructions processed simultaneously. Whereas uh, multitasking with multiple cores will mean that several programs can have their instructions being processed at the same time. Uh, but as it says again here, either way, more cores means more instructions can be processed at once. So therefore, if you've got more cores, generally speaking, your CPU should be able to get through the data a bit quicker. But the problem is that not all programs allow for more than one of their instructions to be processed. So it's really important to recognize that although you might have more cores, if the software isn't written to make use of uh, parallel processing, then um, it's still only going to be able to just process one instruction um, at a time. Now the other thing that you need to um, know about is what is called embedded systems. So this isn't really related to the, the speed of the CPU and the characteristics that affect performance, uh, but, instead, but embedded systems are really important um, for your um, revision for your GCSE. So an embedded system Ultimately, you need to know what one is. Um, now, an embedded system, if you think about a PC, you've got a motherboard, you've got lots of different components that you can add and remove, and you've got input devices and output devices all attached. Now, with um, an embedded system, what you end up with is a programmable machine, um, like a, a PC, but it's really only going to um, have one or two tasks to do. So it means that you can actually create a system that is um, optimized for just a couple of tasks. Um, and it often means that because they're not general purpose, um, they're not gonna have lots of different components that need to be added and swapped and upgraded. It's really just that the hardware is all um, put together, arranged together on a single circuit board so that it can be highly efficient at processing data for just a number of, or a small number of set jobs. So embedded systems are things like um, DVD players, um, cameras and watches and things like that. So embedded systems have all their hardware embedded together as one.